Hello, it's a lovely good evening and welcome to Kamne TV Main News. To present, my name is Jeffrey Ziambo. Top stories in the news tonight. HH and Nalumango promise to unite the country. BOZ maintains the monetary policy rate at 8.5% in the second quarter of 2021. Heritage Party president pledges to mend poverty broken homes if elected Zambian president. In international news, over 238 Indian journalists die of COVID-19. And in sports, Ten and Chilumba's job at Forest Rangers on the line. I have more news after this. The much awaited for Camnet conference is now scheduled for May 2021 with your hosts, Pastors Victoria and Moses Chilumba. We have believed that every Zambian was born for greatness and that you and I can contribute to the development of this nation. The big questions to ask are, can Zambia develop through agriculture? Can we produce indigenous Zambian millionaires? Plan not to miss this national conference on empowering Zambians through agriculture knowledge. Dates, 28th to 29th May 2021. Time, 07.30 hours to 16.30 hours. Venue, the Healing Word Ministries International in Ibex Hill. Charges, 950 kwacha. Lunch, inclusive for both days. Payments through via mobile money on 0962-965-883 or 0979-753-010. Or you can pay via Stambik Bank account number 913000-1825-325. Speakers will be Professor Reda. We need Zambia too to be one of the best nations in Africa. Professor Munkumba. If you, you just listen to a lecture, you may remember hardly anything in two weeks' time. It's all gone. If you read, you may remember 10% of what you've read. Mm. If you participate in a discussion, 50% retention of the mm. knowledge. So I always tell people, knowledge is the only thing that when you share it, you don't lose it. Professor Msongole. Agriculture can actually solve our unemployment for our youth. Through exports, agricultural exports, we can also stabilize our foreign exchange. Honorable Bob Schinga. When you do a budget, you plan it so that all the sectors, especially those that could give you low-lying fruits, in other words, you can achieve a lot with it, are the first things you do first. And biologist Kamweneshe. If we came together, and put our hands together and uh, concentrate on the soil. The, the, the people in Chikinia, these uh, Swahili people said, Dongo Nimari means soil, that's my name. Register your participation through Camnet Lines. Camnet TV, not just another channel. Hello once again, the news in detail. Four presidential candidates have successfully filed in their presidential nomination papers, bringing the total number of presidential candidates to 13. On Wednesday, the main opposition political party, UPND, under the leadership of its party president, Hakainde Hichilema, filed in his nomination papers flanked by his running mate, Mkale Nalumango. And speaking after successfully filing in his nomination papers, Mr. Hichilema says he will endeavor to unite the country, which is now divided on tribal lines. We have more in this report. Thirteen presidential candidates and their running mates have successfully found in their nominations so far, with National Restoration Party, NARIP, closing the day. Earlier, United Party for National Development President Hagainde Hichilema and his running mate, Mutalena Lomango, supported by Alliance Partners, also managed to successfully file in amid its delays in the process. Mr. Hichilema, who came to the center around 13, 10 hours, was kept at bay for close to two hours before being allowed to enter the nomination center. Speaking to journalists shortly after filing in, Mr. Hichilema attributed ECZ's delayment to attend to him to the political pressure from the ruling party who schemed to block his nomination. Mr. Hichilema, however, was consistent with the message of hope for the Zambian people. Managers one, to reunite this country. Two, to reconstruct this country. Reconstruct it from the economic side, which is delivering at the moment, which is delivering nothing for the new land. So we can be able to also rebuild the social fabric that has been destroyed by those that probably thought 
public office thinking that it's a joy right. Public office is serious business. Politics is not a game, it's serious business. And this team will deliver this country. We will not let you down. I should not say more because we'll say a little bit outside, but simply to say thank you, media. Thank you to the Electoral Commission. I know, and I think we all know the pressures they were under in order to disqualify us, but it was not possible. But thank you. To the and Alliance spokesperson Charles Milupi says the selection of Mutalena Lumango as presidential running mate was agreed by all Alliance partners. I we have been very meticulous, very careful in the selection of our candidates, presidential candidates, and his running mate. And you may see that alone is a clear demonstration that the nation is being brought together. Let me announce to the nation that the alliance that you see here, made up of so many political parties, headed by presidents that come from various parts of this country, I can announce that we are solidly united. Nothing will divide us. Others who also filed in today include Socialist Party President Fred Membe, who says this election is for the poor people. Harry Kalaba of Democratic Party also briefly shared his vision for Zambia. To address the challenge of corruption that has ravaged the nation, resulting in loss of billions of dollars through illicit flows. I would like to call upon those Zambians to join hands with us in the people's alliance for the people that we, we may rid the nation of corruption, tribalism, regionalism, nepotism, cadres, cadres, violence, and lawlessness. To our supporters countrywide, I want to announce that the GP has found in parliamentary, mayoral, council chairpersons, and councillors across all the ten provinces of Zambia. But the party of national unit also had this to say. choices and even in times when we had some kind of right policies, there were a lot of inconsistencies. So this country has suffered from a lot of inconsistencies, lack of clarity on policy, lack of predictability in terms of our policies to develop our country. You know, is a long-term uh, process, and you can only develop as a country if you have the right process. I want to be very clear to you, what the country needs from us political parties is simply the right process. Now, Meanwhile, Greatest Road was painted with red by the UPND supporters who came to offer solidarity to their party. <laughs> Sharon Kalimbola. Kamnet News, Lusaka. In a related development, New Heritage Party President Shishala Kateka says she will ensure that dignity is restored in broken homes by creating more employment opportunities for Zambians once her party forms government in August. Ms. Kateka says lack of employment has been the leading cause of marriages breaking up Hence, the need to ensure that men and boys engaging in illicit activities are motivated by creating job opportunities for them. Ms. Kateka said this when the non-governmental gender organization coordinating council NGOCC paid a courtesy call on her at the party secretariat in Lusaka. Meanwhile, NGOCC Vice Chairperson Leticia Pupe says the courage exhibited by Ms. Kateka of being the only female president in the August general election should be a motivation to other women to take up leadership positions. Yes,
sessions once or twice a month where we profile women and women. We report your reports. Oh, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now he had fallen off because then we're thinking so at presidential level we don't have a uh, female representation. So it's very exciting to see you there. I think our, it's, it's, it's encouraging to our girls, young people, to see that uh, women are pushing through. I'm sure you've seen lately that uh, even with the adoption process, even if most women were left out, a lot of them have gone into the engine. So I think this time around, women are taking that step. Yes. They are not uh, laying back and saying, uh, you know, let, let the men create space for us, but we're creating that space for ourselves. Yes. So at the NGOCC, as the CAKES program, we're behind you, ma'am. Thank you very much. And uh, we're excited to, uh, to tell you more about our programs and include you in those programs. As uh, Madam Chair already alluded to, we have a lot of structures uh, in all the provinces, and we'll be happy to use those structures to rally behind you. Thank so you, you have us for first, and we're so excited. you look at the women, they're on the streets from 6 mm -hmm. until 10 at night. They are really going through a tough time. They are breadwinner, homemakers, mm. and other things that they have to do. Um, and, and really, when we begin to, um, as we come into government, which we will, by the way, um, we are going to see how we can change everything around so that even the men, mm. Once they get their jobs back, the women's load will be much lighter. So when we help even the men to get jobs, it means the women too will be helped. They'll, you know, we will come up with programs for women like that as well. But we must understand that the, the social economic... The Zambia Center for Interparty Dialogue, ZCID, has commended political parties that have publicly announced that they will not hold campaign rallies in an effort to minimize the risk of spreading the coronavirus. ZCID Executive Director Dorini Njovu says this is a welcome step taken by political parties as it clearly demonstrates that the lives of many Zambians are being prioritized. Ms. Njovu says the center is encouraged to see that a number of political parties are complying and have acquainted themselves with a standard operating procedure which were developed by the Electoral Commission of Zambia ECZ COVID-19 Technical Committee. She adds that apart from a few political parties that have publicly taken a stance to desist from holding campaign rallies, the center is pleased to note that during the pre-processing of presidential supporters, there was strict adherence to COVID-19 golden rules by all parties, and this has also been observed during the processing of presidential nominations, which is currently underway. Uh, the center is uh, pleased to note that uh, even during the pre-processing of uh, the presidential supporters, um, uh, the, the, the members uh, of political parties uh, adhered uh, to COVID-19 golden rules. Um, and uh, it has also been observed that uh, during the uh, presidential processing of presidential nominations, which, which is currently underway, uh, clearly we're all able to see that um, political parties are um, actually complying. And for us, this is, um, this is a very good move. And so as a centre, I would like to urge all political parties uh, uh, and uh, all the players uh, uh, to continue with the same spirit as they participate in all the electoral activities that uh, have been lined up. There are many uh, different ways of um, campaigning, uh, but what is important is that uh, Zambians uh, are prioritised. We need a healthy nation. The Bank of Zambia has maintained the monetary policy rate at 8.5% in the second quarter of 2021. Bank of Zambia Governor Christopher Mvunga announced during a monetary policy briefing in Lusaka Wednesday that the decision to maintain the policy rate is in order to allow for the last policy rate adjustment to take full effect on the economy. Mr. Mvunga adds that the decision is also in recognition of existing vulnerabilities in the financial sector and fragile growth. The governor, however, says inflation is projected to average 21.9% and 16.7% in 2021 and 2022, respectively. Details in the following report.
Financial stability is currently the focus of most central banks around the world. It is therefore natural that central banks default always more attention on how they will prevent or reduce the risk of financial crisis. To that effect, the Bank of Zambia Monetary Policy Committee dedicates two days of every quarter to deliberate on how it will stabilize the finances of the country. And at the Monetary Policy Committee meeting held in May 2021, the central bank has decided to maintain the policy rate at 8.5% in order to allow for the last policy rate adjustment in February of 2021 to take full effect on the economy. The Monetary Policy Committee decided to maintain the policy rate at 8.5%. So we retain the status quo. The policy rate will not be changed for this quarter. In arriving at this decision, the committee noted that while inflation is projected to remain above the upper bound of the 6 to 8% target range, over the next eight quarters, inflationary pressures are expected to subside more quickly than envisaged in the February Monetary Policy Committee. Despite the policy rate being adjusted by 50 basis points in February of 2021 from 8% to 8.5%, inflation has continued to rise way above the target range to now 22.7%. The Bank of Zambia has since threatened to adjust the policy rate upwards should the expected drop in inflation not materialize sooner than anticipated. That our expectation is that inflation will come down, particularly towards the end of the forecast horizon. This is mostly on account of excess supply of maize and other crops, higher copper prices, and improved external financing. By external financing, what I mean is money coming in outside our borders into the country. In addition, the significant improvement in copper prices and renewed interest in domestic government securities by non-resident investors are likely to be supportive of lower inflation. Inflation is now projected to average 21.9 percent and 16.7 percent in 2021 and 2022, respectively. The bank also claims that physical pressure have remained high, reflecting high expenditure on fuel imports and the farmer import support program, as well as the need to clear accumulative domestic areas. And there are key sectors that have been identified. So that is already giving a, a boost uh, across the board. And that feeds into, of course, consumer spending, uh, prospects for investment, and also uh, net exports, which we continue to, to record. So I think in aggregate, uh, things are looking up, and this all begins to give a good um, uh, environment for, for prices to evolve, and hopefully that we can quickly return to target uh, as possible. Thank you. According to the bank, the implementation of physical adjustment in line with the economic recovery program and the understanding reached in the discussion with the IMF on the microeconomic framework remains critical to restore and anchor microeconomic stability and to create the much needed physical space. Prudence Chota, reporting for Community News. Vice President Inonge Wina is concerned that some communities have been on the government relief program for 20 years, a move she has described as unsustainable and a barrier to national development. Ms. Wina says she has been tasking officials in Disaster Management and Mitigation Unit, DMMU, to provide tangible solutions other than leaving people on relief programs for many years. Speaking during the launch of the joint launch of the Voices for Climate Action in Zambia and roadmap towards the UN System Summit in September 2021, Ms. Wiener has expressed happiness with the project being championed by WWF and its partners in Kafue District. We have more in this report. The joint launch of the Voice for Climate Action program in Zambia and the roadmap for the United Nations Food System Summit slotted for September 2021 was graced by Aona, the Vice President, Mrs. Inonge Wina, in Lusaka Province, Kafue District, in Chanyanya area. The Vice President, among other areas, visited Namulela Youth Cooperative Fisheries Project and Chiansi Cooperative, Kalembula Market Gardens Women's Project. The Vice President says the government wants to guarantee sustainable food production, environmental sustainability, and overall betterment of livelihoods in resettlement areas. Why is it that some communities in Zambia are ordering food for 20 years, for 15 years, 
there must be something. Let's find out. And what you have demonstrated here in Janyanya means that we can win a number of communities from being recipients of relief. They should be on their own, be productive citizens, and be able to support their livelihoods and also even support uh, the families and contribute to government. Natural and Combo is Worldwide Fund for Nature Country Director. For your office, Your Honor, we know that you borne the brunt of meeting the needs year in and year out of communities that are affected by floods and drought related hunger. Our hope if we, is that if we are successful for this pro through this project, we have clear voices and clear solutions pointing to how the thousands of Zambians that still depend on relief can be transitioned from depending on relief to thriving economic, productive economic activities, depending on natural resources where they are. And the United Nations is resolute to complement Zambia's development focus. Upcoming national and sub-national dialogues on the food system are not meant to be one-off, but should provide an opportunity for us to review our choices and be bold on the outcomes we seek throughout the decade of action and put the world on new trajectory within a generation through action-oriented outcomes that Zambia could carry forward. Meanwhile, the Netherlands Embassy has described the project as a milestone that will contribute towards uplifting the livelihoods of the people in the area. We will work through a strategic partnership consortium led by WWF, working with also HIVOS, Slum Dwellers International, South South North and Akina Mama. The project will focus on targeting vulnerable communities across nine districts in the Kafui Flats and Lusaka province regions over the next five years. This action recognizes the immense challenges Zambia continues to face as a result of climate impacts. And the British government says it remains resolute in helping Zambia to combat the effects of climate change. It is my hope that this Power of Voices initiative, led by WWF, with its focus on climate agenda, setting and movement building at local level, joint lobbying and advocacy, as well as mutual capacity strengthening for co-creating alternative solutions and alternative livelihoods, will complement some of the work that the UK itself is supporting here in Zambia. Patrick Soko, Cabinet News. The Road Development Agency, RDA, says the construction of the Kasonemo Mwenya Bridge along the Luapula River will enhance trade between Zambia and the Democratic, the Democratic Republic of Congo and Tanzania. RDA Head of Communications, Masujion Lovu, says this is because the road links the three countries. Ms. Andlovu says the construction of the road will also reduce travel time from Zambia to the port of Dar es Salaam in Tanzania by 300 kilometers, thereby creating financial opportunities for businessmen and women. He explains that the project, which is in its early stages, will see 92 kilometers of the road being constructed in Zambia, while 95 of it will be constructed in the DRC. Ms. Andlovu said this in an interview with Kamnet TV News. 92 kilometers of uh, the road will be done on the Zambian side while about 95 kilometers of the road will be uh, constructed on the uh, Congo DR side and um, this is uh, an important uh, road in that um, it is going to reduce on the congestion that um, takes place at Kasumba Lesa border post and also the fact that uh, it will reduce on the travel time by about 300 uh, kilometers to get to the port of Dar es Salaam in Tanzania. So um, this, once this uh, bridge is built, it will enhance trade uh, between the two countries of Zambia and the Democratic Republic of Congo. And it will also enhance trade with uh, the Republic of uh, Tanzania and also um, it will promote uh, regional integration uh, in this part. 
You're watching Kamle TV, not just another channel. We'll take a break. We'll be back with more news. President Dr. Edgar Chagwalungu and the PF have facilitated increased electricity generation to 3,000 megawatts from 1,767 megawatts in 2011. Vote for President Edgar Chagwalungu and the PF that have brought you change. In this fast-paced era of industrial boom and population growth, there is need to invest in smart ways of managing electricity and water consumption and reducing utility billing costs associated with the postpaid billing system. At Savenda Electronics, we manufacture right here in Zambia different types of high-quality smart electricity and water meters to customer specifications. Savenda Electronics water and electricity meters help you monitor your usage and gives notifications such as low units, tampering, low battery and many other features. These easy-to-use meters makes it easier to buy units even in these COVID times and top up just from the comfort of your space. Favorable contract terms are available to both electricity and water utilities. For more details, get in touch with us on the following numbers 0956-580-349 or 0977-498-318. Savenda Electronics, the real deal. At Master Signs, our services range from outdoor, indoor signage such as billboards, banners, 3D light boxes, pylons and neon signs. We are located at plot number 397A, McKinney Road, Lusaka, at Oryx Filling Station. For more details, call us on plus 260-967-100-090 or plus 260-966-999-981. Or better still, email us at infomastersign at gmail.com. Master Sign. We will make it shine. Yes, it's May Day all the way. You've worked hard. Now it's time to play even harder with entertainment that you'll absolutely love this month on Go TV. Okay. Shake things up a little and you'll never know what drama will fall. No matter your age, there's always some fun to be had. And if it ain't broke, they'll fix it anyway. For your favorite shows, stay connected to Go TV to get into Mayday Entertainment. Find something to distract me. You got it, no problem. Go TV, love it. The much awaited for Camnet Conference is now scheduled for May 2021 with your hosts, Pastors Victoria and Moses Chilua. We have believed that every Zambian was born for greatness and that you and I can contribute to the development of this nation. The big questions to ask are, can Zambia develop through agriculture? Can we produce indigenous Zambian millionaires? Plan not to miss this national conference on empowering Zambians through agriculture knowledge. Dates, 28th to 29th May 2021. Time, 07.30 hours to 16.30 hours. Venue, the Healing Word Ministries International in Ibex Hill. Charges, 950 kwacha, lunch inclusive for both days. Payments through via mobile money on 0962-965-883 or 0979-753-010. Or you can pay via Stambik Bank account number 913001825325. Speakers will be Professor Reda. We need Zambia to, to be one of the best nations in Africa. Professor Munkumba. If you, you just listen to a lecture, you may remember hardly anything in two weeks' time. It's all gone. If you read, you may remember 10% of what you've read. Mm. If you participate in a discussion, 50% retention of the mm. knowledge. So I always tell people knowledge is the only thing that when you share it, you don't lose it. Professor Msongole. Agriculture can actually solve our unemployment for our youth. Through exports, agricultural exports, we can also stabilize our foreign exchange. Honorable Bob Schinger. When you do a budget, you plan it so that all the sectors, especially those that could give you low-lying fruits, in other words, you can achieve a lot with it, are the first things you do first. And biologists come when they share. If we came together and put our hands together and uh, concentrate on the soil, the people in Kenya, these uh, Swahili people said, Dongo ni Mali, means soil, that's money. Register your participation through Camnet lines. 
Kamnet TV, not just another channel. Welcome back. Patriotic Front member Chimba Kambwili has disclosed that his stay in PF so far has been excellent. Speaking shortly after his court appearance Wednesday morning, the former NDC leader said his stay in the party is good and that there is nothing he can complain about. Mino, Dr. Kambwili says he approves President Lungu's choice of Professor Luo as his running mate ahead of the 12 August general elections. We have more in this report. The Lusaka's magistrate court has pushed further the defense of former National Democratic Congress leader Chimba Kamli after failing to commence with his defense in a matter where he is accused of being in possession of property suspected of a process of crime, among other charges, as his son is still reported unwell. On Monday, the 17th of May 2021, the former opposition leader was set to open his defense but could not do so because his son, whom he has been jointly charged with, was reported to be sick. And once again, Wednesday morning, the case could not proceed because of his son's sickness. Magistrate Mwakami Kalili has since said the 28th of May 2021 has the date for the former opposition leader, his son, and three others to open their defense. In this matter, Kambuli, his son, Mwamba, Mwamona Engineering and Technical Services, Lukwesa Msonda, Mulinga Makasa, are charged with one count of making a document without authority, one count of uttering a false document, two count of obtaining pecuniary advantage by false pretenses, and 35 counts of being in possession of property suspected to be proceeds of crime. Meanwhile, speaking shortly after his court appearance, Dr. Kambli described his stay in the patriotic front so far as impressive. Professor Luo is my sister. So what do you expect from a brother? Not to approve. I welcome appointment. Just one question. Um, your stay in PF so far, how has it been? Ah, excellent. <laughs> excellent. In this case, it is alleged in one of the counts that Mwamona Engineering and Kambuli on dates unknown but between August 1st, 2014 on September 30th, 2016, in Lusaka, whilst acting together by means of false pretenses, dishonestly obtained more than 2 million kwacha from China Henan International Corporation Group Limited, reporting that Momona, a company which was subcontracted, was executing the works on Wingo Mansa Road when in fact not. Kambudi and Momona are also alleged to have presented a false ZRA tax clearance certificate to Zesco purporting that it was genuinely issued, resulting in the award of a contract of 8 million kwacha for the construction of houses and toilets under the Luzao hydropower project, thereby obtaining thereby obtaining pecuniary advantage of a contract. Until then, you can only wait for the 28th of May 2021 to hear the accused side of the story. Miriam Kaimba, reporting for Kamne TV News. Lusaka Magistrate Felix Kaoma has dismissed a matter in which former United National Independence Party UNIP President Dilienji Kaunda, his deputy Njeko Anamela and three others were accused of contempt of court. In this matter, the five, namely Tilienji Kaunda, Njeko Anamela, Alfred Banda, Welfare Mfune and Joshua Lubemba were facing six counts of contempt of court. Allegations in the case were that Mr. Kaunda issued a media statement purporting to be president of UNIP when this was subject of the court process. Further allegations were that the accused attended national prayers in their capacities as UNIP leaders when in fact not a clear disrespect of the court order of injunction restraining them from performing those duties. However, when the accused appeared before court Wednesday morning, Magistrate Kaoma dismissed the charges on the grounds that the complainants and their lawyers in the matter have not been going to court. The Drug Enforcement Commission DEC Public Relations Officer Matthias Kamanga has warned members of the public who are fond of abusing cough medicines, commonly known as benilin, without a prescription from a medical practitioner, that the law will catch them. Speaking in an interview in Lusaka, Mr. Kamanga disclosed that it is unfortunate to note that members of the public have continued abusing the said medicine without the fear of the law. 
Mr. Kamanga is also concerned with the fact that a lot of pharmacies are selling the drugs to the public without any prescriptions. Meanwhile, Mr. Kamanga has disclosed that the commission has arrested a 73-year-old woman of Lusaka's Chilenje township together with her nephew, aged 35, for trafficking in cannabis. He explains that the two suspects were arrested at Intercity bus station after they went to receive concealed parcels of cannabis from outside the country. The commission has also confiscated 178 bottles of benelin from a taxi driver of Lusaka. Uh, a number of people in connection with uh, these quantities that you can see, um, which were of cannabis. So this one was uh, picked up in Chongwe area. Uh, a woman aged 40 years old by the name of Lizzie uh, Zira was picked up with 115 kilograms of uh, uh, cannabis, loose cannabis. So all these sacks here and what is in the drum here is uh, what was seized from her. Uh, secondly, there was another seizure that was made in the same Chongwe area in Manika. Uh, these drums, five of them, were buried underground with a concrete that was put on top. And so officers had to break the concrete in order for them to get to, uh, to these drugs. Uh, the total weight uh, is 355 kilograms uh, that was seized, with, which was together with uh, these two small drums uh, that, uh, that was seized. The streets of Lusaka has been the use of Benley with Codin. As you can see, the commission seized more than 178 bottles of benzene with codeine. So I'd like to warn members of the public that are in the system of using, abusing this particular drug, that the long arm of the law is going to catch up with you. Government has called on water utility companies in the country to employ alternative means of mobilizing resources such as the public-private partnership and development of viable bankable projects. Ministry of Water Development, Sanitation and Environmental Protection Permanent Secretary Mavuto Sakala says this is in order to attract financing towards infrastructure projects to increase access to water and sanitation. The Permanent Secretary adds that the effects of climate change have continued to pose threats to the water system, thereby impacting negatively on the attainment of sustainable development espoused under the country's Vision 2030. Mr. Sakala was speaking in Lusaka Wednesday morning when he officiated at the official opening of the fourth chief executive forum. I wish to, however, note with concern that despite making efforts in accelerating universal access to water and sanitation, national water security and the environment protection, a number of issues continue to affect service delivery. Among these challenges include the following dilapidated water supply and sanitation infrastructure, inadequate and untimely release of resources for infrastructure development, reduced revenue due to the COVID pandemic, high energy and water treatment costs, and lastly but not the least, high non-revenue water. Colleagues, other challenges that continue to impact on the smooth implementation of the programs in the water and environment sector include uh, but are not restricted to the following adverse effects of climate change encroachment on headwaters and ecologically sensitive areas environmental degradation and water pollution defore deforestation and inadequate awareness on the environment ladies and gentlemen i therefore wish to take this opportunity to appeal to water utilities to employ alternative means of mobilizing resources such as the public-private partnerships and other initiatives through development of viable bankable documents and obviously engaging with the partners that made submissions yesterday and I believe this morning. The Southern Africa Interfaith Peace Mission has observed that some churches have not been speaking out against corruption because there are beneficiaries. Organization Executive Director Howard Banda noted that while issues of corruption have been more pronounced, the church also benefited from politicians through donations to their church activities. Mr. Banda has since underscored the need for the church to build a strong independent financial base to avoid being enticed by political leaders who end up compromising the stance of the church in society. 
as the campaigns ahead of the August 12 general elections become tense. Mr. Banda has urged the church to play a neutral role and to be advising politicians against dividing their members. Mr. Banda made the remarks when he featured on a Kamna TV program dubbed The Verdict. Why? Because we want to put up a strong financial base whereby any man of God will not be willing to do a wrong because of the financial support he expected from somebody who was stolen from you know, money which is coming from a corrupt activity. All right? So that's why some churches are mute. They can't talk about corruption because they're beneficiaries of such kind of things. But now as Southern Africa Interfaith Peace Nation, we are saying together we can fight that evil and together we can rise the standard of Zambia to another level. If we come together, the church and other religious uh, you know, uh, you know, groupings coming together, we can bring about a Zambia which is natured with integrity, principle and dignity. Just like the way the data is easily collecting revenue from you and me. That is the way how the, uh, the church should also collect revenue from the membership. Now because of the limitations, you will find that most of the pastors have compromised and they have actually delivered or come the wrong stuff in the church. As a result, people have come to flash money, people have come to flash just to ensure that they get the confidence of the general populace. But the church has been uh, has kept quiet over, over such. We need a strong voice when it comes to such. We are going towards elections today. Religious activities should never change. When you look at Malachi chapter 3, he says, I, the Lord God, I do not change. This is a time when the church should come together, pray. You're watching Camden News. We take another break. We'll be back with more news. From time immemorial, we have had different types of lighting options. From those that can burn down our investments in minutes to those that dig holes in our pockets due to constant replacement and huge consumption of our Zesco units. Savenda Electric introduces the new and advanced electric bulb with cutting edge technology of LED that has low power consumption, gives out bright white light and lasts up to 25,000 hours. Savenda Electric manufactures all types of LED light like plastic LED fluorescent tubes, down lights, ceiling lights, outdoor fittings and solar street lights made to customer specifications. Let's live on the bright side of life by choosing the wide range of Savenda electric lighting solutions that are available in all leading stores and supermarkets countrywide. For orders, call 0962-642-490 or email jnbanda at savenda.com or pchabula at savenda.com. Every day for me means hard work, going to sell my goods at the local market. To get more customers, I have my secret. Oracle Pure Glycerin. It's soft, smooth, and keeps my skin perfect. <laughs> and my customers know it. Thank you, Oracle, for my perfect skin. This month, we're taking over your TV screen with brand new entertainment. We're the new leaders, ain't got no competitors. A Border Patrol agent is forced to work for a Mexican cartel in Coyote. My family, it's up to you to keep them safe. A Ghanaian fashion designer weathers societal prejudice while chasing her dreams in 40 and single. Single lady to the dance floor. A husband will stop at nothing to cover the tracks of his wife's outrageous crime in What If. It is your responsibility to make sure that I come out clean. Three chefs go head to head using ingredients chosen by their very own neighbors in Kitchen Crash. Well, I love it. It's blended. It's meat. It's meat sauce. It's meat sauce. And there are wacky adventures galore when two families are forced to live together in Boy, Girl, Dog, Cat, Mouse, Cheese. We can handle it. It's your moment to be taken over with the freshest entertainment. Kamne TV is here to entertain, educate and inform you. Catch Rise and Thrive at 0730 hours every Saturday. 
fresh and new praise and worship comes Monday to Friday at 8 hours. Kids need to be glued to the TV every weekday at 09 hours for their favorite cartoons. Off the pitch with the boys as they talk about sport on Saturdays at 0930 hours. Remember, we are also here to entertain you with our different varieties of movies every weekday at 10 hours. Join Pastor Victoria and Moses Chilua with Healing Word Ministries International Church Live Sermon every Sunday at 10 hours. Katamanda brings to you another journey of gospel ministers on Saturdays at 10.30 hours. The verdict comes to your screens at 17.45 hours. Join the Revival Harvest Church every Sunday at 18.30 hours. Every Monday to Saturday, join us on the news desk at 12 hours as we bring to you the midday news and at 19.30 hours Central African time every day for the main bulletin. The ministry with Pastor Moses Chilua comes every Friday at 20.45 hours. On Mondays, it's your favorite national matters at 20.45 hours. Wednesday and Thursday, Pastor Victoria and Moses Chilua are on partnership of greatness with different spiritual teachings at 20.45 hours. And Frank on Camnet comes to your screen every Tuesday at 20.45 hours. Camnet TV, not just another channel. The much awaited for Camnet Conference is now scheduled for May 2021 with your hosts, Pastors Victoria and Moses Chilua. We have believed that every Zambian was born for greatness and that you and I can contribute to the development of this nation. The big questions to ask are, can Zambia develop through agriculture? Can we produce indigenous Zambian millionaires? Plan not to miss this national conference on empowering Zambians through agriculture knowledge. Dates 28th to 29th May 2021. Time 0730 hours to 1630 hours. Venue The Healing Word Ministries International in Ibex Hill. Charges 950 kwacha. Lunch inclusive for both days. Payments through via mobile money on 0962 965 883 or 0979-753-010 or you can pay via Stambik bank account number 913000-1825-325 Speakers will be Professor Reda We need Zambia to, to be one of the best nations in Africa Professor Munkumba If you, you just listen to a lecture you may remember hardly anything in two weeks time it's all gone If you read you may remember 10% of what you have read. Mm. If you participate in a discussion, 50% retention of the mm. knowledge. So I always tell people knowledge is the only thing that when you share it, you don't lose it. Professor Msongole. Agriculture can actually solve our unemployment for our youth. Through exports, agricultural exports, we can also stabilize our foreign exchange. Honorable Bob Schinger. When you do a budget, you plan it so that all the sectors, especially those that will give you low-lying fruits, in other words, you can achieve a lot with it, are the first things you do first. And biologist Kamweneshe. If we came together and put our hands together and uh, concentrate on the soil, the, the people in Kenya, these uh, Swahili people said, Dongo Nimari means soil that's burning. Register your participation through Camnet Lines. Camnet TV, not just another channel. Welcome back, and in international news, at least 238 Indian journalists and other media workers have died covering the pandemic, most of them in the past seven weeks. And even though they are on the front line, many have not been able to get vaccinated. India is grappling with a deadly second wave. For more than a year, journalists in India have risked their lives against an invisible threat to capture the impact of COVID-19 on the world's second largest population. And few places have been hit as hard as India. More than 275,000 people have died from the virus, including at least 238 journalists. That includes Nadeem Ahmed, who was the president of the Amroha Press Club in the state of Uttar Pradesh. 
His brother Munthazam told Al Jazeera he died the same way as many others during the second surge, outside a hospital without help. There was one hospital left and we did everything we could. Reporters called the district magistrate, we called several government officials. After trying a lot, our hands were still empty. We were told there were no beds and don't even hope for a ventilator. Despite news media being deemed an essential service in India during the pandemic, the government hasn't prioritized vaccinations for journalists. As the second wave gripped the country over the past two months, many states declared journalists to be frontline workers, but few have inoculated them. Journalist Mohammed Imran was a friend of Nadeem Ahmed's. The government is claiming that journalists in Amroha have been declared frontline workers and would be vaccinated at the earliest. But none of that has happened because none of the journalists in Amroha have been vaccinated. Television news reporter Nidhi Shree in the badly affected state of Bihar says journalists there live in fear. It's very difficult for us, very, very difficult. But someone has to report from the field. Someone has to work. Someone has to show the real pictures. So we're doing that work last year and this year too. But this time, there are many journalists in several states who have died. And looking at those deaths, we feel afraid. But if you're going by safety, it's very difficult to do the job. Researchers say of the journalists who've died since the pandemic began last year, more than two-thirds lost their lives since the start of April this year. Just uh, accepting the uh, very superficial or just the, the titles of something will not really uh, solve the problems. So our, our effort is to get into the details uh, of what the governments mean when they say that journalists are frontline warriors. When it comes to deaths of journalists due to COVID-19, India is among the top three countries in the world behind Brazil and Peru. More than three journalists have died every day from COVID-19 since the start of April this year, and it's suspected to have killed another 72 since then. Despite the vaccine shortages, journalist organizations say those risking their lives to do their jobs should be protected by the government. Elizabeth Puranam, Al Jazeera, New Delhi. Spain has sent 2,700 people back to Morocco out of the more than 6,000 who swam from the North African country into the Spanish enclave of Chueta over the past two days. Interior Minister Fernando Grande Malasca confirmed the move on, on Tuesday, adding that Madrid has sent 200 extra police to Chueta to reinforce the 1,200 officers currently guarding the border with Morocco. Tuesday in Ceuta and still they kept coming. Some had swum around the border fences sticking out into the Mediterranean Sea or used rubber dinghies. Others simply walked across at low tide. One young man's known to have drowned. Dozens have been treated for hypothermia. The adults were transferred to Ceuta's main football stadium, but those thought to be minors were sent to warehouses run by the Red Cross and other groups. The Spanish government's now sending 400 extra troops and police to boost Ceuta's border force while appealing for calm. The last thing a migratory and humanitarian crisis of this nature needs is for political leaders to show hatred or fear. We therefore call on everyone, responsibility, prudence and a sense of order. Prime Minister Pedro Sanchez has cancelled a trip to Paris for a summit on international aid to Africa. Instead, he's travelling to Ceuta, which is separated from Morocco by a 10-metre high fence. Meanwhile, Madrid's dismissed suggestions the sudden rise in migrant arrivals is linked to a diplomatic row. Last month, Morocco reacted angrily when it emerged that Brahim Ghali, the head of the Polisario Front, had been allowed into Spain for COVID-19 treatment. The Algeria-backed group has fought for decades for Western Sahara's independence from Morocco. Analysts had warned the row over Ghali could push the Moroccan government to limit cooperation over illegal migration and other issues. Brussels is now urging it to stop any more people trying to reach Spanish territory. The most important thing now is that Morocco continues to commit to prevent irregular departures and that those that do not have the right to stay are orderly and effectively returned. Spain says it is expelling all those who've entered Ceuta illegally, but it's not clear if that applies to unaccompanied migrants under 18 who are usually allowed to remain. Nadine Barber, Al Jazeera.
we now have sports news. And in sports news, Zambia Super League side Forest Rangers has sent head coach Tenant Chilumba on administrative leave with immediate effect. The club has announced that second assistant coach Owen Kaposa would take the charge of the team in the interim. This is according to a statement by Forest Rangers media and public relations officer Christina Zulu. The club is currently sixth on the Zambia Super League log with 43 points after playing 31 games. That sporting story brings us to the end of the news, but we'll take a look at the headlines once more. HH and Nalumango promise to unite the country. Bank of Zambia maintains the monetary policy rate at 8.5% in the second quarter of 2021. Heritage Party president pledges to mend poverty-broken homes if elected Zambian president. In international news, over 238 Indian journalists die of COVID-19. And it sports Tenant Chilumba's job at Forest Rangers on the line. The cabinet verse of the day is coming from the book of Psalms 4 verse 8 and it reads, In peace I will both lie down and sleep. For you alone, O Lord, make me dwell in safety. My name is Jeffrey Ziambo and thanks for watching Kamna TV Main News. Bye-bye.